Hoverboards. We know them, we mostly love them. They're probably one of the most popular modes of transportation in all of science fiction. We've seen them in shows like Ben 10, movies like Back to the Future, part two I think, and even in video games like Sonic Riders. The best Sonic game, don't at me, we can fight later. Today we're gonna test the power of topology in Blender 4.0 and make a hoverboard. Again, because this is actually the second time I've made this particular type of hoverboard. Because it's the second time I've made this hoverboard in a 3D environment, it should be easy, right? Giant question mark across the screen right now. But before we get into all of that, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a little series I like to call the Blender Discourse Course, an extended mini series that serves to document the various shenanigans that I have encountered and have suffered through so that you don't have to throughout my entire time relearning Blender. Yes, I said relearning Blender because I had learned it before and I forgot twice. With all of that being said, and with all of that out of the way, if you like this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button right next to the like button. And since you're already down there, hit that like button too. And while you're also down there, please leave a comment talking about some of your experiences in Blender or just some things that you want to see me make next inside of this little 3D app that is going to slowly consume my life for the next year. Your interaction is really going to help determine the course of the next couple of videos because I have a lot of ideas, but I always want to hear from you all. So with all of that being said, today we are talking about hoverboards and hoverboards we will get to. Funny enough, I actually ended up downloading a lot more hoverboards from Sketchfab than I thought I was going to. I really just downloaded those to get a clue as to the size and dimensions that I really wanted this hoverboard to look like, or at least half when I start making it in Blender. Because I made it in Magic Poser and I actually couldn't export it out, well, not in the way that I wanted to, I just decided, yeah, we need to actually make a new one. Why not? That'll be a good practice for how to actually do everything that I've been learning at this point. So I decided to go ahead and take all the shapes that I've mostly had in mind for the entire hoverboard. I was able to go back and look at my footage that I actually recorded in Magic Poser and it more or less helped me with just about everything that I needed to do. The hoverboard that I have above this one that I'm actually making was the one that I liked the most or at least the one that had a lot of the cool techie cybernetic or at least cyberpunk and sci-fi type of things that I really was looking for. After I got the main base of the board ready to go, I started putting all the panels down. The panels here are supposed to act as the main set of controls for the entire hoverboard with various front and back panels controlling various different functions, primarily just taking off stopping, as well as a couple of other uh, weapon systems that I'll be adding into it a little later. And I'll actually show how some of those work in future scenes. And some of the panels that are in the middle are just supposed to act as storage compartments to hold snacks, uh, flashlights, and all other little supplies that you can fit inside of the glove compartment of your car because everybody has that. But after all of that was said and done, I ended up getting around to coloring a large portion of the entire hoverboard. Funny enough, I have a lot more control over coloring everything than I expected I would in Blender. But, you know, that kind of helped me a lot more when I actually got around to coloring the gravity modifiers, or at least that's what I call them here. Uh, they're technically called thrusters as well. But the story that I'm writing and all that good stuff, they're just called gravity modifiers. They modify gravity. <laughs> who, who knew? After I was done placing the first gravity modifier, I decided to play around in edit mode on the board mesh just to see how manipulable I can actually have it. But I realized I didn't really have to do any of that. I had all of my shapes ready to go. So I just decided to overlay some more shapes and you know, clip them in and clip them out whatever I needed to. That's also when I figured out how to actually make a pyramid and then a not so flat pyramid. Funny enough, uh, these are definitely not the shape of a Star Destroyer from Star Wars. I'm doing my best to not make any Star Wars references, but um, I'm failing right now. I was like, eh, let me do one episode, but no. Other than that, I ended up changing some colors, testing out different textures, and then I got to probably the most complicated, or at least uh, I'll say tedious portion of the entire hoverboard building process. That was laying down the uh, weapons panels, or at least the defense panels. These panels are supposed to have different weapons as well as defensive countermeasures for my character who is you know, supposed to be soaring the skies and all that good stuff. When I first made it in Magic Poser, it was difficult to align all of these panels together and actually get them uh, mostly lined up 
kind of right um, on both sides. I did it perfectly fine on one side, and then once I actually had to flip and mirror that, in Magic Poser, you couldn't really do something like that. In Blender, you could. However, it's still just as complicated to do as I'm showing right now. The other equally complicated part here was to make sure that each of the panels were slightly elevated than the last one. So they had to be slightly above each other in a step fashion, but you know, I couldn't really get that properly. So I just went ahead and got back into uh, duplicating the gravity modifiers. And then I started working on the back of the entire hoverboard. That made a lot more sense to do, you know, just stop working on something and then come back later. I ended up getting it, but you know, it just took a little bit more tweaking and I didn't want to spend the entirety of my two hours working on this. I say two hours like that because my first hoverboard that I worked on in Magic Poser only took about two hours and 30 minutes to fully make. And now that I have a lot more power because of Blender, I decided to challenge myself to make a, well, actually make the same hoverboard, but as fast as possible. And luckily I was able to duplicate and mirror a lot more objects faster in order to actually get the entire thing done. But that kind of leads into these thrusters and the fact that they didn't work for the entirety of what I was trying to do. I kind of really didn't see how the thrusters could work, but they didn't work the way that I wanted them to. But I still kind of kept them in the first place, just because why not? One of the reasons why I actually left the thruster out in the final product was because um, the emission factor that I had to set for both thrusters, because I have two, kind of just irritated me to the point where I didn't want to even want to deal with it. And also, I think it was too detailed and too textured for me to actually use with this hoverboard. So I'm probably going to have to retexture it in the future anyway. But I was able to get it on the hoverboard and actually get it able to sit where I needed it to sit. So you know, if I ever do want to actually use it, it'll be in its own folder, which it is right now, or at least it will be in a couple of minutes. So now I actually just decided to just go ahead and set up the scene, test out the lighting. And before anything else happened, I wanted to figure out if I could add more lights. Well, add a set of lights to the gravity modifiers themselves, because they're supposed to glow a nice, bright neon blue kind of. Funny enough, it actually did work. And I just decided to, you know, give you a little spin around the whole thing. I love how the lights actually came together, but I ended up having to really just uh, parent the lights and keep the lights there while I was testing out some renders. But in the end, I love how the lights came out and the lighting in the entire scene does help with that. Going forward, I was very happy with it. And I knew that I would be able to, first off, I knew that I can actually turn these lights off too, which is the most important thing. But for the scene that I actually have coming up, well, for the first one that I did, it makes sense. But for the one that I did a little later with the character actually being in space, it was kind of cool to actually have these neon lights glowing. So yeah, I loved how everything came out in the render, but overall, I really wanted to get this into a scene and actually take some pictures. So that's kind of what we ended up doing. And so here is Laura in her glory. I love how the pose came out. I do love, more importantly, how the lights came out because those lights were, again, not really a big deal or anything, but it was like, yeah, I have this scene set up and even though it's mostly lit outside, I was like, yeah, I have to do something with it. Again, I'm just very happy with how it came out. And then after everything was done, I was like, yeah, we gotta do uh, about five more different scenes. So yeah, that's more or less where this entire thing comes together. And so with all that being said, hope you all enjoyed this little video. Be sure to check out the rest of the Blender Discourse course playlist, as well as hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Tell me what some of your favorite hoverboards are from different media and all that good stuff. Mine is still from Sonic Riders because that's kind of the one that I use to actually base Laura's hoverboard off of. It's the same hoverboard that was at the beginning of the video, so I kind of stole it in the first place. It was worth it, but you know, I did my best to mm, kind of be as derivative from it as possible, if that makes sense. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed the video once again. Be sure to check out the Blender playlist and I will check you all later.